Let me start the way the gentleman started, right? I am Harish, I am married, and uh, I work for Microsoft as a web developer evangelist. Uh, my primary job is to talk to developers, architects and all, and I also own the technical content for some of the premium events like TechEd. How about TechEd here? TechEd and a few other events. Uh, that's my primary job. And I am also a web enthusiast. I have been working in web uh, ever since uh, web started becoming a serious platform. Right? But this conference is interesting. It's about HTML5 and the possibilities there. And I wanted to start right away with the possibility of HTML5. Right? So the fish that you see here is not my screensaver. It's running out of the browser as you can see here. Um, this is something that's built out of HTML5. You see the power of HTML5 here. If you ask me when I started web programming whether I can do this in a web, I would say no. You must be crazy, I would say, because I can do it with Flash or something, but I can't do it on the regular web because it had a lot of uh, roadblocks. It was perceived as a thin client. How many of you have been through that? Thin client, thick client. Some of you? Okay. So it was perceived as a thin client where we have static pages which read text for over and over again kind of thing. But we never had it so dynamic to do things like what is possible today in HTML5, right? Stop me anytime if you have any question. Um, and we'll be happy to answer this there. The one that you see here is actually running, uh, it's called Fish Tank Demo. If some of you are connected here to the internet, you can actually go to ietestdrive.com. That is the site where this is running. Live thing, so not cook my mission. It's running online. So you can go and see what's happening there. Um, that's where you are, ie.mixer.com slash test drive. You can find a lot of samples there. So this is something running out of the HTML5 there. So fundamentally, I wanted to share this as the agenda. Um, this is my agenda here. Right? Um, quick intro on HTML evolution, on how HTML5 came. Some of you might be new to programming. You might not even know what is HTML1, 2 or all. Suddenly it's 5 already. Right? And uh, it happens when we do the conferences. We talk about, did you work with .NET 2.0? They said, no. Is there something like that? But I'm working on .NET 4. So that's why I wanted to just quickly touch upon what is HTML uh, for. I didn't work on HTML1, so I'm not that old, okay? And think about, uh, talk about IE6 and XP, and uh, mention a few things about IE7's uh, compliance compatibility. Uh, I was also requested to talk about IE6 market share and who is still using IE6, uh, and what are the kind of customers who are using IE6 today. By the way, IE6 is used by a lot of customers. If you think that, when I say who is using, a lot of the corporate companies today use IE6 as their standard browser. If you go to any of the big MNC companies, they won't uh, move to IE7, IE8 uh, as quickly as we would want them to move. They still have the IE6 as a standardized browser there. And then uh, also talk about IE8 and HTML5 and all these things there. I'll try to keep it as demo as possible. Uh, I have a deck, but I'll try to keep uh, it as simple as possible. So that is the agenda I have. So any questions so far? Right, like this is a bar camp, so you can ask questions right from uh, now. Or you say, just talk whatever you want to talk, I'll ask you later. Hmm? Okay. So uh, that's the uh, thing. So the whole idea behind IE9 was to build a faster web experience. Right? We are a platform company. Why would you worry about IE? We care about Windows. We care about Office, which is the primary source of income for us. But why would you worry about IE? Because IE is more or less becoming a platform for delivering a lot of applications and design it with all the latest standards. One of them is HTML5. HTML5 is just one set of standards. Okay? So, quickly moving on. Uh, this is the agenda looking like. Like I said, the expectations are rising for the web. Uh, the first one that you see is the MSN site which was looking like this in somewhere around 2000-2001 time frame. But you can see how other things have evolved, right? YouTube, the most popular thing today for videos. And then you see uh, some other things like Photosynth, which is Microsoft product, where you can do a lot of stuff with photos. It's a free tool, you can install it. They both started developing HTML. At that time, both of them had their own set of specifications. There was no standardized one there. HTML2 is the first standardized specification that came out there in 93. Right? At that time, Netscape and IE were the only two browsers which were prominently used there. And then HTML3 came out in 96. And then further on, HTML4 all came there. HTML5 has been in work for the past eight years. So it's not a new thing. Okay. Some of the companies are pushing HTML5 hard today uh, in their own interest, but HTML5 is something that's there for almost like seven to eight years now. The reason why they started HTML5 was that they thought that the standards need to be improved and the capabilities can definitely be improved from the web browser standpoint. Today, if you talk about other browsers or any browser uh, till this recent versions of browsers, you can only do things like HTML rendering, probably a markup rendering, and uh, you can do things like 
plugins etc for doing media and all that's because primarily the browser standards don't understand anything beyond this they understand html they understand xml they understand http request etc that's all right but uh, the HTML body sat down and decided that uh, we will improve the web browser standards so that they can understand much more things than simple uh, request HTML guest etc. which is pretty old now. That's why HTML5 started coming out there. It's still under uh, work under specification, but the good thing is that a lot of browsers are already starting to use that today. Right? It's still not yet out uh, as a full-fledged version, but still a lot of people are using it there. So, and adoption will happen as we develop applications for HTML5. That, that's the way the browsers evolve, right? We did quite a uh, bit of amount of research on what, on where is the time being spent on browsers, right? If you take about any application there, there are many things that happen there. It's not about JavaScript engine, or not about any plugin that runs there, right? There is HTML parsing, there is collections, and then there is this uh, marshalling. Pretty much a lot of things happen there in a browser, and each one has its own set of time that it takes to render a page there, right? Because when you go to the browser and hit us enter, and you see something there, it's no, it's no not because of the browser or anything on site. It's because there are so many things that happen there in the background there. Okay, if you are on a very high speed LAN or something, you won't see these kind of time lag there. But if you had used browsers in the past, you would know that you keep on waiting for that next 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 thing, right? And now it's almost like 10 o'clock. But if you go to IRCDC at 8 o'clock in the morning, you will still experience the same thing, right? So that's that's some of the things that take up the time of uh, thing there, right? And what about IE? The interesting question. Always people ask you, okay, um, Microsoft, okay, I know XP, I use XP there, pretty good. And then I need to install Service Pack one, not so good. Service Pack two, okay, IE is there, okay, but I have moved to other browsers. The reason being that primarily IE six was designed in 2000, along with uh, Windows XP release there, right? The OS market was different there. The security uh, exploits were very different at that time. The, the requirements for OS was totally different from at that time, from what it was, what it is now today. That is the reason primarily IE6 was designed, IE5 is designed for running on XP, which had a different set of problems at that time in the industry. There. And then we also released IE7 there. Between IE6 and IE7, there was a considerable amount of time lag that happened there. Right? That happened primarily because Windows as a core team started working on the new file system called as WinFS. Heard about it? Right? And they never thought that IE or browser would be such a prominent thing that has to be released so quickly there. They're always thinking that, okay, next version of browser will come with next version of voice. They tied up like that. Okay? But then they thought that, okay, the browser is evolving very fast, so they had to release IE7 for XP there. How many of you have run IE7? Great. Right? So IE7 is the first step for us to address the real world of web-based problems, where there's a lot more interest on web than desktop applications there. Rise well, was like kind of here. It was trying to support the standards behind. It was also trying to be uh, 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 backward compatible to a lot of applications. It was in between. They don't want to really break the existing applications there. And then IE8, right? With Windows Vista, IE8 also came a little later, which took a stand that we will go with the standards. Right? There's always a challenge in the browser industry. One is you should go through the challenge, uh, uh, standards. HTML standard, CSS standard, WW3 standard, all these things there. And then you also need to give a good experience for the application there. The third problem, dimensional problem is that people who have built applications already, they don't want to touch the code there. Do you agree? My application is working fine in IE6, why should I change it now for working in IE7 there? You have a problem, I don't have a problem. So that is the third dimensional problem there. But IE8 to a stand that we will give you a compatibility view. If you go to IE8 today, how many of you use IE8 here? Not of you, right? If you go to IE8 today, it will give you a compatible option. You can go and look at a compatible view, it will go there. Not just on the UI, you can even go to the developer tools bar. If you press F12, it will give you the developer tool bar. There you can go and set the mode to IE7 or IE6, whatever you want to do, and set it there by default. But that way you are saying that I am okay not agreeing with the standards. I want my application to run fine, that's all. So we gave that stand there. So IE8 was released a couple of years back. And then we had IE9 platform previews there. We didn't want to really go and give a browser directly without going through a lot of testing there. So we gave IE9 as platform previews for the last six months there. How many of you installed platform preview here? Awesome. Platform preview gives uh, a browser plus a standard set of demos that you can see and experience. One of them is the fish tank that you saw there. And I didn't run it from platform preview, but this is also something that comes with platform preview. So even if you don't plan to install IE9 in the future, you can install the platform preview and showcase these demos for showing the HTML5 capabilities, right? A lot of good demos that I'll show there. But what is 
the primary uh, thing behind I9's uh, creation, right? Everybody talked about media, acceleration of media, acceleration of hardware, etc. IE9 is going to be fully supporting hardware acceleration. What does it mean there? When you go and play a video file or a media file, it pretty much depends on your player currently, right? Pretty much depends on the player currently and it tries and uses whatever resources available there. But any machine that you are running, any Intel machine that you are running, which is released post 90s, has a graphical processing unit or GPU card. Right. But nobody utilizes that. Only the local uh, Windows media player utilizes that. That's why you get rich media there. The moment you go to web, we depend on Cellulite or, uh, or Flash to that extent. But the idea behind IE9 was to use the GPU capacity to the full. Not just here there, full. I'll just show you an example of what it means in a second. Yeah. The, under, uh, the one that you see here to my right is when you use IE, uh, when you use uh, hardware acceleration to some extent, 50%, 30%, whatever you could grab from the machine there. When you get a full power of machine control on the hardware acceleration, that's what you get there. Right? That's an analogy of what you can see there. You get the real power of the machine when you use a full hardware acceleration for your browser-based application there. And how does this hardware acceleration work? Right? This is something important because HTML5. You have your underlying desktop machine and then you have all your GPU buffers etc. there. You have your browser application running there and then the page elements are generated directly to the browser but the media elements are powered through the GPU card. That is one of the reasons why you can get maximum uh, speed as well as quality of media applications when you run it through the HTML5 based browsers, typically IE9 which is fully hardware accelerated browser. Right? If you don't still believe on the speed of this, I want to show you a demo which is probably will show what, what I mean. Right? It's just downloading the images from the internet, so that's why it's taking a while. Yeah, it's ready now. You have the audio cable here? No oh, idea, yeah, okay. Yeah. previous one. At least it shows quickly the results etc. there. Similarly, airline based website, they keep rolling out every uh, quarter something new there so that user experience can be improved there. So this is uh, looking at all the best sellers that you can see here and this probably will answer a question on which scenario is when I should be using this there, right? You want to read this book here? How about this? Right? You want to go back, close this and go to some other book? What this? So this is something. If you are building a shopping cart, you can think about a scenario like this, where you can show a, a dimensional view of all these things. There. This is only perspective three D. You won't be getting the actual three D there, but you'll be able to at least showcase your product in a much better way than what people can see on a static image based URL. Do I answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, so browsers like Chrome also try to leverage the hardware acceleration. The same demo can be run on Chrome also, but not to this speed. As 50% they will get the acceleration speed there. We always have the power of underlying windows running here. That's why we have the power here. But even if you can run the same browser on Chrome, you will be able to see the result. It will not be this fast as what you see here. Yeah. Ish, uh, why is it dependent on the uh, why is the browser dependent on the operating system? Like for example, if I am running Windows XP or Vista, I can't install i9. Do you think that makes you can difference? install on Windows Vista? Like okay. Windows XP, I'll come to the question there. Like you can install this on Windows Windows Vista and Windows 7. Windows Vista with Service Pack 1 and Windows 7 without any service pack, you can install this there today. All of us had this television, right? That JC Bad television, which is the big box, we all had that there. All of us had television in the past. Doordarsha, we saw that there, the circle thing. All of us today have LCD TV, right? 
What if you can take the LCD screen and put it into the TV there? We'll have that same TV monitor, TV thing, which has this uh, cathode ray tube box there. We'll put LCD screen on top of it. How does it look? Does it look good? Does it, right? You can try and go back compatible to some extent there, but the moment you go, keep on going behind, 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 there is an experience fall that you will hit there. Because you can, we can support I, I, XP. It's our own code base, right? We can do that, definitely. But we want people to also mature to the new OSS. There are many other things than hardware GPU. Browser runs not just on hardware GPU. There are a lot of things underlying there. I'll come to I'll come to the question once again. So that is one of the reasons why uh, we thought XP should not be supported in, uh, by IE9. <laughs> one reason you can always do a mismatch. You can always do a patch up work there and do this releases for. Some people are running even uh, Windows 95 today. I can see. I can show you people running Windows 95. We can do that up to Windows 95 also if you want it. But that is not where we want to go because we want to get the best experience for the people there. And one of the ways we do this is to get people to the newer versions of OSs, right? I know people running Windows 2000, Windows 98. They are happy. But if they want to get great experience, they have to come to the new version of browser. Right? We still have browser for Windows 98, but you won't get this Amazon bookseller running there properly. Because then you have to really stay back with what you have there. And there is also a lot of other things there. There is a, there is a code base that is totally changed on uh, from when you move from Windows XP to Windows Vista to Windows 7. There are a lot of changes happen there at a kernel level. That a lot of changes happen there, which are not that easy to implement in a OS like Windows XP, which is designed 10 years back. You remember the same thing I told in the beginning. That is one of the reasons why we didn't want to uh, support it for Windows XP there. Right? And honestly, if you go and buy any machine today, nobody is shipping it with Windows XP. We have stopped it long back. If you go and buy a laptop today at Dell or any other place, you will get it with Windows 7 most possibly. Right? So, what is the point of supporting Windows XP? There are a lot of users. We want them to come to Windows Vista or Windows 7. Right? Yeah. But, uh, you can be. Yeah. Uh, I have seen the same same demo in Silver Life, mm -hmm. which works in uh, XP. Mm -hmm. It was the same way. Uh, right. Right, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So when you are running, so uh, it's an interesting question, right? About uh, plugins and all. I'll come to that in a second. Okay. Yeah. I'll just minimize this. Go back to my slide and uh, talk about a few things. Right. Here you go. Sorry, previous slide. Right. You can run this kind of a similar experience in Silver Light using uh, IE on Big XP also, right? But then what you are depending on is the plugin there. Right? There are three options today. You can design plain vanilla sites which are having nothing there. It will work on all voices everywhere. You can also add plugins which will play some rich content like this using Silver Light or Flash. You can do that also today. But HTML5 is primarily designed to overcome this problem. Right? What if I not install Silver Light as a part of my corporate firewall network problem? Some companies don't allow you to install plugins there. Right? What if I can't do that kind of thing there? And that is one, just one reason. There are a lot of reasons why HTML5 is trying to defy this problem of plugins. It wants to be able to render things itself rather than depending on any plugin. There. That is the whole model of HTML5. Right? By the way, similar to our own product, I'm telling about this because HTML5 is getting very quickly adopted by many browsers. IE9 is no limitation there. With IE9, we will still support Silverlight. Silverlight is for more scenario, more deep feature scenarios there. Not this simple stuff there. This is simple comparatively to what you can do in Silver Light today. For example, you can do high streaming, high video streaming, high quality video streaming from IES uh, using smooth streaming technique, which will work only on Silver Light. It will not be, HTML5 won't be able to support it there. It's going to take a long time to come there. Okay? So there are still scenarios for Silver Light that will, yeah. Uh, I have a question related to uh, <coughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes. I can talk about IE for myself. IE is supporting only the latest standards. So if there are a lot of deprecated markups there. Even HTML5 has a lot of deprecation of uh, markups, like what you said there, right? IE6 was supporting everything. Anything you put there, it will still come there, right? It's a lifesaver for web developers. Uh, IE7 kind of went here and there. And then IE8 step, we'll have only standards there. Going forward, we will only support the latest standards. Whichever browser is supporting the latest standards, will be having the same sort of experience there. So my question is, standards mandated, every browser should support 
to answer it two parts. One is that if the markup is not supported, IE9 for, for, doesn't it re render it by default. It has that issue, right? Then you have to go and change the uh, browser compatible type to IE or IE7. It will still render there. You can still go back and switch it on there. Other browsers I won't be able to tell it there, but all the browsers are trying to be SML by compliant. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any other question? Yeah. Uh, what's the date of WebKit? Uh, basically, uh, you talked about i9, but i9 is only for Windows environment, right? Yes. So, what about WebKit in terms of the system's architecture? Because it's open source, it can go to any port of the device. Right, right, right. right. Because i9 is only. It's a JavaScript engine, right? Web, uh, it's a web port. Yeah, yeah. So, i9, I, I9 uh, runs Chakra as a JavaScript engine underlying there. It, uh, so, I can't talk about other OSs currently. i9 is supported by Windows. That's what I can talk about currently there. So, it, see, there are three things there. One is the standard compliance. You have to be standard compliant so that all the bodies will say yes to it, right? Whoever form those bodies. Number one. Number two is that you have to give great experiences that i9 will provide to you, right? Number three, it will be backup compatibility. If your applications are written for older browsers, you can still go and switch it back to i7 or i8 if you want to them, right? The underlying uh, JavaScript engine is called Chakra, which is powering all this graphic capability, right? The, this, the speed of rendering of JavaScript. And then there's GPU card run powering the graphic capability. That's what is there currently there. There is no open source script that we are using internally. Right. Now, WebKit gives you all this flexibility, and plus it's run on XP. For example, I can use Chrome, which runs mm -hmm. on WebKit, and mm -hmm. still runs on XP, so I don't need to upgrade mm -hmm. in that case. And WebKit is giving me all the other tests, like asset free pass, mm -hmm. and all the sun spider tests are passed, which I also run, I9 also passes through. Yes. So what specifically I'm getting out of I9. Uh, WebKit is also using GPU support, uh, using hardware acceleration. Okay. And uh, I heard news that long back, Microsoft also decided. That they will go with WebKit for some time, but then it was taken back. Okay. Uh, just wanted to know the insight to that. I don't know about the definition part, uh, but uh, yeah, you you saw what you get. You just saw what you get, right? The experience you got is what you get there. Also, the security is something I didn't talk about there. The high standard security, phishing, anti phishing filter, everything is that you got there. I don't really know what you do with WebKit. I don't really understand what you do with WebKit, but this is what you get there. Whatever you get, whatever you saw there is what you get there on the browser. And you get great experience. I, I keep like repeating this, but you get great experience from the uh, media. You get great security browser. You get compatibility also. That's what you get what you see from IE9. That's one of the reasons why you want to move to IE9 there. The other answer is that the market share is also picking up there very quickly. Right? IE6 is probably 15% market, but IE is, overall IE is still having 61% of market share there. If your application will not run on IE9, you better want to upgrade it yourself. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, one question is like if I'm building an HTML5 application, and yeah. I wonder, uh, my yeah. target is to, like in my application, should run on all the devices, be it like an iPhone, iPad, iPad Mac, Linux, or Windows. Mm -hmm. So that's the, like basically when, when you target HTML5, why you want to be a standard compliant, in my opinion, is you want to target all the platform at the same time. If I want to target, like a specifically Windows platform, mm -hmm. I can build a similar experience in Silverlight and it will be available for more Windows users, right? And Mac. And Mac, yeah, and uh, you have on Moonlight on Linux as well. Right? Yeah. So, uh, but I'm saying like if I if I want to if I, if I want to target only the Windows platform users. I'll, I'll back it off being a... Uh, no, no, no. See, you'll get, you'll get the point I told earlier also. See, Silverlight is not just for what you do currently. Currently, you do things like uh, book turning here, the flip turn example, or you probably do media streaming, etc. But there's much more thing that you can do with Silverlight. Like I talked about the smooth streaming, right? That you can never do with uh, this thing there. Silverlight is for a different scenario totally there. HTML5 browser, if you're building something for HTML5 based website, you want your site to look better using HTML5, then that's what is what I'm talking about here. If you are building a forget about IE for the for now, forget about IE. You are building a site. You want your site to be HTML5 compliant. What do you want to do now? What will you do? You will build it properly, right? If it's your own business, you will build it properly. If you do that properly, it will work great in IE. That's my answer. Got it? Yeah, please. Yeah. <coughs> I I just try to uh, uh, in addition to what I said. A couple of questions going on in terms of standards, right? If you look at W3C, it's about the standards is over two and a half thousand pages, right? And if you look at the way all the vendors, be it Chrome or Firefox, or Microsoft, you know, they're part of that <coughs> consortium which which kind of supports this momentum of HTML5 and stuff like that. And people are gung-ho about HTML5, they're all picked about it. But if you look at the way browser implementing it, it's varied. That, that, that's been the story in the past also, right? Something which works in one browser does not work well in other browser. You have to do a lot of if then else. Stuff if browser is so and so, split this kind of HTML and stuff like that. That's that's the state of a pen still date. But going forward, 
That's where everybody is trying to make an effort to ensure that it does not happen like that. We have something called same markup as strategy. For example, if you build something in IE, I mean something you build for IE9, as a, as a developer, I wish that works across the browsers. That's the motive. So if something, you might want to show the border radius demo, Harish, which talks about how a simple piece of code, how Chrome and Firefox understands it and displays it. For example, today as Microsoft, uh, we can say we are probably close to standards in, compared to other vendors for the simple reason that we have submitted about 5,000 or test cases just on HTML5 standards. Okay, and, and it's an evolution that we are all going through. It's not that, you know, you, I9 is out and it supports all HTML5. Simple code, you can actually try, if you, if, you, if, you, if you know Canvas stack for that matter, right? if you try to use that across the browsers, different experiences. You can just probably see the water radius. You know, if you, if you switch the same thing to, if, if you use, use the same URL in Chrome or Firefox, I reached, I don't show that. It will actually, uh, the browser shows the source there in terms of how it interprets that particular piece of uh, tag that you've used, right? That, that, that's where it stands to, you know, you, you cannot even today build something which works across the browsers. But effort has been made by everybody to make it happen. That's going to be the future tomorrow, okay? But that's going to be the future in terms of uh, uh, you build something for one, what you see is what you get across. That's a long way to achieve, by the way, right? Uh, Chrome <laughs> has come out with HTML for support. Uh, if you look at Hari showed you a fish tank demo, you, I, I, I sincerely request you guys to take a look at the same demo in either Firefox or Chrome. Firefox is much faster than Chrome. I mean, probably they're pretty close to, uh, uh, not, uh, they're pretty close to IE9 in terms of GPU powered uh, experience. But uh, they long way to go. But Chrome is way behind. So it, it's, it's a varied experience across. And it will take some time for uh, it to stabilize. I mean, that, that's the answer from a standards perspective. Uh, <coughs> that, that, that's pretty much the standards. You know, uh, we wish that you know, everything was the same across, but that's not true. That's not the reality. Okay. And somebody asked a question only in IE. See, there are two things. I, I think you're getting confused here. One is HTML5 standard, right? From our side, we say that we will support HTML5 standard. If you build a site, forgetting forget browsers, if you build a site which is HTML5 compliant, we will render it based in IE. Okay? That's the answer. Number two, if you are building something for Silverlight, we will support it in IE, Firefox, Safari, Safari, Opera, everything that you want, and on Windows and Mac. Okay? The third thing is that if you are building something for IE, uh, for HTML5, using harder acceleration, it works best in IE. You can see the difference here in Chrome. The fish tank demo that I showed to you there, you can see the difference here. Right, this is running Chrome, right? nothing else. A Chrome code base I can't change anyways, right? So if you run the same thing uh, in file in uh, IE. By the way, this is the developer tools, but I don't think you're all interested in developer tools. If you are, let me know. I'll be here. We can talk about developer tools also if you're interested, right? So this, you can see the difference between the experiences there because of the power of the graphical capability, right? So that is something that I uh, primarily wanted to showcase as a part of the demo there. There are other things I will showcase while this comes up. Right? What does the video format supported there? Right? That, the next question that comes there, right? Not all video formats are supported currently as HTML5. <laughs> so if you are looking at the code for first time, HTML5 code looks like this. Video, that's the tag that you want to do if you want to put a video there. Right? That's why I told you. For things like video, audio, media, etc., you don't have to really worry about adding a plugin and then putting your content there. That's the whole idea behind HTML5. Right? That's one of the ideas I'll say. For example, if you want to put a video, we can just put a video like this and then it can render the video without having any additional plugins installed there. Okay? You don't have to worry about updating the plugin, you don't have to worry about what do I do if my plugin is not compatible and all, because this is going to be supported out of the browser. This is done by HTML5 or we have no job there. Okay? So if you again have a question if you work only with IE9, no, because this is a HTML5 standard. Whichever browser supports HTML5 will be able to render this. Alright? So one second. I wanted to showcase that. Okay, great. Oh, it's having trouble? Okay. Okay. Right. This is the platform preview I showcased to you. Um, this actually comes as a can set of demos that you can showcase if you want it yourself as well. Uh, I just showed you a lot of demos here. Uh, you can also install the beta version that's running there. I'm having both running here. So this is the beta version of IE that I'm running here currently. So I just close all this and open it again. Right. This is the platform preview. You can see the difference in speed between Chrome and IE. Right. Right in front of you. Let me close all these things. Close this also. Right. That's
that's IE9 for you, which is running real build. The earlier one I showed you was a platform preview, can set up demos there. You can browse it there also, but this is running as a, oh, as a browser in my vision directly. No can demos here. You can see that uh, it has this interface. How many of you are seeing IE9 for the first time here? Okay. So this is the interface that we thought is better. We can still give feedback because it's still under beta. And this is the new tab number that you see here. Right? If you want to go to something like, uh, say, Facebook, you can pin it up to your taskbar and do that. Right? It looks like this. I think they stole the idea. Long <laughs> back. So this has this same uh, set of uh, things that you can look for. You can see what uh, what are the new set of uh, things that you want to see. You can even hide the sites if you want to. In private browsing gives you the option to browse some things which you don't want people to see there. Right? Net banking. Don't go anywhere else. Net banking. If you want to go to net banking and don't want people to see what you are accessing, you can go to in-private browsing. These things were there in IE8 also. In-private browsing was there in IE8 also, where you can switch on in-private browsing and go to any site that is not stored as a part of your local machine's cache. Okay? It still gets rendered in the server. I'm just repeating it to be safe. It still gets logged in the server because the server is what draws the request there. So, but if you don't want your browser to showcase what you have been seeing, you can go to the in-private browsing option here. Okay, let's see how this speeds up the browsing experience also. Let me uh, close this and uh, for example, uh, if you are looking for something like let's see top type HTML5 site, right? You can see the suggestions that come up there immediately, right? It goes to the internet and fetches all the suggestions possible there and comes there. It gives you two options. You can see that there is a history that's coming up there where I have been to all these places and there is also a suggestion that's coming up there. You can turn off if you want to do that there. And not just not just this URL, right? Sometimes you don't remember the URL. You can still type the text here, and it still tries to show sites which has the title tag as agenda, right? Not just the URL. If sometimes what happens is you remember the title tag that you saw there, some nice looking movie title tag or something like that. But you don't remember the URL. That's the whole purpose, right? You want to be able to find out that there. If you type agenda also, it tries to go and find out where all agenda is a part of the header. So you see that I have not typed anything like this uh, URL or something like that, but it still tries to find out that there is a agenda title tag in SharePoint Project 22, which is what is showing up there currently here. Alright? So the other thing that people would probably be interested in is the developer tools bar. Let me quickly show that also to you. I had to show one more thing here, which is the Redif song bus, right? As you are right? Let me see the audio is on. So, this is a HTML5 based in the song. A nice song, why to put it to sleep? This is playing as a HTML5 component. It is not having any plugin installed there. If you go and browse the same URL in uh, an older browser, for example, IE7 or IE8 or any other browser, you will get to get a pop-up saying that you have to install a media player or any other thing, right? Flash-based thing there. So this is something that's possible with HTML5. Only one good example. There are a lot of other examples there. But what you see here is that the media element is playing without any additional plugin installed there. So a lot of companies are already geared up for HTML5. So if you are building your skills on HTML5, it's Pretty good for you because a lot of companies today they want to get to the next level of browsing experience. So they are making or revamping their sites to make it HTML5 compliant. Sandeep and Adi works with a lot of these companies. Redif is one company which wanted it to comply, be compliant with all these uh, standards there. There are many other companies which are revamping their sites to make it HTML5 compatible. So it's a great opportunity for you to learn HTML5 as well. Right? And it's an open standard, so there is nothing that is specific to any platform vendor or anything like that. If you learn HTML5, it works on all the supported browsers. All right. So honestly speaking, um, mobile experience is not yet there. Um, you forget about IE or Microsoft for the matter. I don't see HTML5 support out of the box coming in any mobile browser today. If you can correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. For for device for device. Okay, great. That's great to hear. Yeah. As of today, IE9 is not supported in mobile devices as of today when I speak there, but there is something that's happening in the background uh, that I can't reveal. But for, I can talk about Microsoft product, IE9 looks 
when you remove a particular CSS uh, standard and looks how it looks like kind of thing there, right? Change what? I haven't checked that there actually. You can delete an attribute, it seems there. This is on F12 only. Okay, so, so uh, the, the developer toolbar is still under progress, but what we have done is we have done a lot of performance enhancements there. It was not that fast in IE8. We have done some performance enhancements for IE9 so that it stores up very quickly and gives you additional options there. Honestly speaking, I'm still exploring on the new features there, so I'll be able to tell you if you can drop me a line on this thing there. But this is again there in IE8 also, that's what you see there. Your compatibility mode is also there. You can go to browser mode up to IE7 if you want to. How it will render on IE7, you can switch it on at the level there. I don't think, uh, so profile was all there as well, but if you have not seen this, you can start profiling an application and go and browse the site and then you can stop it there and find out where is that it's really failing or where is that it's hitting there. You can do that all from the developer toolbars there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what is that? What is that? Okay. Okay. Which version of IE? Which version of Chrome we are talking about? You, just, you can't just generalize things like this. Right? Chrome also has four versions now. There's Chrome version one also. You should tell which version. Okay, okay. I'll ask you a counter question. Hold on. If you are developing a HTML5 application and if you run on Chrome 1, will it give the same experience? No, right? No, hang on. Let me answer this, right? Right. Okay. Okay. You can't, I think I answered it already, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. If you are a developer, you don't really care about what is the voice running there, right? You just have to use HTML5 coding laws, doesn't require you to have anything spread. Yeah. Yes. I think you need to understand this properly. HTML5 is a standard, you can edit this using Notepad, right? HTML also, you can design an HTML application using Notepad also, correct? And if you are using XP or Windows 98 for that also, the code base is HTML markup code and it's HTML5 compliant code base. That will run same on IE9 also. Okay. Yes, go ahead. If you are talking about CSS3, right, uh, most of the things don't work uh, same on Firefox, the latest build of Firefox or Chrome, because I have tried a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah, what, 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 I don't think he's talking about CSS3 at all. No, he just started off. No, he just started off. Yeah, I, I got your question. Yeah. Right? Just so, let me answer the question. I got your question. So, uh, basically, you know, the problem exists. For example, if you look at IE9, whatever sites work in IE7 or 8 works within the problem in IE9. Okay? If you have, uh, I know, you know, from developer perspective, we built a site, when IE8 came into picture, sites broke. Right? No, it never worked. Man. So, you have something called, you know, emulate IE7, tags you put in your code, and it worked well in IE7, IE8. Same thing, if your if you, if you site works in IE7 slash IE8, it works within the problem in IE9. No, no tweaking at all required. Okay? Yeah. Hundred times I don't know, but one time you can check it because you still have a developer job, and uh, that's what I'm saying. No, see, if you are building a site for IE seven, you can check it in the compatibility view how it works here. The browser mode you can go and do it there, right? 
and you can check out which version of browser you want to check it there from here, right? 100 times, I think, uh, yeah, we'll talk after the session. Right? Let me give a of you. Yes, yes, yes. So it's different from Google and other browsers. See, I. That's the problem. Every time you need to give a pattern, you take care of the bit. It's a headache, right? Right, right, right. It's the same line, it will be easier for all the developers and the developers to work. But what? See, I think if I have a lot of problems, I'm much more. No, no, what is the idea? Okay. Yeah. What, what is that? Sorry. Oh, that's that also. I haven't checked it myself yet, right? So I have nine minutes. I have some. I can take some questions also. I just complete this part, and uh, then we will see a few other things there. So we have made a request currently of doc type 5.html 5.10. I think the internet is having some issue. We'll check it out after this internet is up, okay? Cool. So um, I think a lot of uh, good questions, a lot of agony that's coming out there, that we have done a lot of work there. Happy, be happy. You had a good developer job. You still have a job because you have a lot of work. Um, primarily, that I want you to do three things there, right? If you are planning to install the platform preview, you can install and check out all these demos and see. Some of you who came here just told that they want to see what is the possibility with HTML5, right? A lot of people said that here. For that, the answer is if you install INN platform preview, you can see some of these possibilities right out of the box. You don't have to build it and wait and see them. You can take it as an inspiration and do it yourself also. Or if you can just want to build it yourself, you can try it out there. But that is there. If you want to check out the real browser, you can install IE9 beta that's available there for Windows uh, Vista SP1 and Windows 7. And you can you can really see the experience that you get there from uh, IE9. Definitely it has been better for me. As much as you all use, I also use IE uh, as my primary browser and I really look forward to these changes because IE8 was there but it still had some issues there in terms of compatibility, in terms of the new markup, uh, HTML5, etc. there. But IE8 is definitely there which is uh, really encouraging for me as an end user also. I'm not talking about a developer, I'm talking about as an end user. Right? Cool. Um, any other question? Yeah, go ahead. Installer of what, IE9? Yeah, okay. Okay, so any browser installation will happen as it happens as, right? Today if you go and install IE9 or Chrome or anything there, it probably takes a few seconds if you are on good bandwidth there, right? There is no difference in that installation there. There is no codec kind of thing there that's installed there. Internally, HTML5 supported browsers will have all the required set of attributes to run the sites there. Huh. It's relatively higher currently. I, I didn't check about Chrome installation uh, size currently, but IE9 is relatively higher now because of the beta part, right? It's still in beta and it's in, installing some hard fixes internally. That's why it's a little higher currently, but when it rolls out, it's going to be much simpler. Right? Yeah. Uh, how do you migrate your applications to HTML5? Do you have any tool as such or how to do like manage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, one header, I mean, just change it to docs.html, and I mean, that's the only thing that uh, differentiates Because your... you have different tags coming up with HTML5, right? For example, Possibly, uh, I, I think, fortunately, I've been working with a couple of uh, customers at Times of India. I'm really from the hands So, uh, this is my personal opinion again. And that's what uh, most developers tell me as well. HTML5, again, uh, though it's so much a buzz, you end up writing a lot of JavaScript again. The tags just gives you, for example, the canvas tag. I can give code that example. Uh, it's just a container. <coughs> what happens with the inside of JavaScript? Nothing else is happening. Uh, nothing else is uh, the advantage that HTML5 is giving us. Just a tag. In single line of flash, you know, by default, gives you a container so that you can program within that paradigm. But otherwise, uh, it's no big deal. For example, audio tag, what Hari showed there from Radio, it's a simple tag. Uh, no streaming, so nobody would try to be adopted. They want streaming, that's where secure streaming comes in a picture. So, 
we just it's the inception if you ask me and I'm no big deal if you ask me this majority of JavaScript and jQuery people uh, still continue to write that that stuff okay any other question that in case you your question is not answered you can always contact me in this my blog address uh, you can write to me from here also but questions now All the features supported, right? A good question, right? HTML5, like I said earlier, it's actually under the, uh, it's still under uh, development. It's not a full-fledged uh, released uh, spec that's out there. They're still uh, working on it, still improvising it and making it better, right? The basic main elements, the canvas element, the video element, the XAML player, the, the, the audio player element, and few other elements which are there are supported by IE, right? Not everything that is there on HTML5 is currently supported. I'm talking about current beta release there, but I don't know what happens between the beta and the actual release. That happens sometimes uh, down the, in the half of next year. So before that, probably we'll support most of the important specs that's there in HTML5. But as of today, we don't support everything that is there on the book. Right? Uh, what's the second question? What are the fallback mechanisms for things that are not so? Say I want to implement that is something that's not there and I mean that I9 doesn't support. What are the fallback mechanisms? You are on your own. <laughs> no, no, <that's> just, no, <laughs> no, I was just joking, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't no worry about it. Yeah, you are on your own is a good term to use, right? It simplifies my answer. But the answer is that we only support 50% of what is there currently, which are the important things there, right? But uh, we are not sure how much percentage of main HTML tag you want to support when the release is going to come there. So we'll be able to comment on that at that time there. As of today, if you design something that doesn't work, that doesn't fit in the stack of HTML5, that is supported by IE9, it will not be supported. Be a case to case basis, we have to check on this thing. I don't have an answer currently for this, uh, like what he said, right? So there will be some mechanism case on a case to case basis there. There is a list, if you go to the same site, there is a list of supported tags of HTML5, which is supported by IE9. That will give you an idea of that there. And HTML5.org, I think, is, is the website that has the full list of HTML5 tags that are under development. You can check it out there as well. Yeah, any other question? To some extent, uh, I believe. Uh, to some extent, I believe. 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 To it's a good question for me to ask internally. Let me check that. Because I mean, as a user, since I'm a HTML5 user, I expect all my browsers to run everything that Microsoft is supporting. Right. In the name of HTML5, to run all the browsers. Right. So if I am, doesn't matter what browser, I would expect Photosyn to work on it. Since you're pushing it so fast, you should push it on your own product as well. Okay, great. Good feedback, thanks. I don't have an answer for the currently, but uh, I can check and tell you on this thing. Harish, yeah. uh, there was a question about uh, developer that you developed Right. It's on par with uh, Firebird, I would say. And there are few more, uh, few more plugins that you can add, that is Fiddler. Fiddler will also, Fiddler, Fiddler will give you actually more of socket connections and all those things, you know, bit by bit updates uh, also. You can try both, but this is on par, you can edit and uh, change the CSS styles and all those things. Locally, basically locally. Basically locally. When it is downloaded, and actually, you can do a JavaScript debugging to a very granular level. I tried it, okay. I have been using uh, Chrome from day, day one that it was released. I have two versions. 
it doesn't even come far that far also. Firefox, I agree, every time it changes, I get a new build and all those things, but this one, I will tell you, you should go with it. Try it once. So uh, the developer coding part of it is one of the best ones I can ever see. Let's just check it. It's good. Whatever you could do with Firebug, you can do it. Yeah, any other question? Let me show that also. Script debugging. Right. That's script here. Let's try putting a debug point here and run this. <coughs> Show it you once time how you run some issues, but uh, you can do skip debugging. You can do all the things that you want to do there currently. I haven't used Firebug, so I won't be able to comment on that part. But uh, thanks for the feedback. Any other question? For I, I said that I mentioned something else, right? If you're running IE6 or IE7, you can install something called as Internet Explorer Developer Toolbar. This is not as big as what you see currently, uh, but if you if you want to install, you can, there is an Internet Explorer Developer Toolbar built internally by the team. That you can install, it will come as a small plugin on the bottom of the browser and you can keep seeing all the network post requests etc. there. In case you don't have IE8 or IE9, you can do that also in IE6 and IE7. Okay? Which one on XP? I don't see you. I don't see you. IE6 market share, um, I think I'm running out of time, I'll just take this last question and run it, okay? IE6 market share is around 15% currently, right? Anna? That is more? Okay, great. Sorry? So playing a song with it. I was thinking somebody has a mobile phone ring Okay, sorry about that. IE6 has got still 15% market share, right? Who is running this IE6? Is that your question? Is that your question? Who has the question? You ask the question, okay. What, what is the question? It's, Primarily India and China. <laughs> yeah, IE6 is there as a part of Windows XP. A lot of people who are, I'll be open here. Okay, I don't think I don't I know it's recorded, I know, but what I can do. Primarily people who are running pirated version of Windows are running IE6. Right? And there's nothing we can do about it. IE6 is run by, uh, because uh, we are given genuine updates for IE7, etc. for <coughs> Windows which is running genuine OS, right? But people who are running uh, IE6 for two reasons. One is that they have pirated the OS. Number two, they have applications which will run only on IE6. They don't want it to break, right? Many of the companies, like I said earlier, right? They are genuine users, by the way, okay? They should not be offended. They also are supported, uh, are running IE6 currently, okay? There is still some market share there. We are trying to get people to IE7 at the minimum so that they can expect better experiences there. Like I said, it's built 10 years back, so different days totally there. Yeah. Um, so a lot of corporates also use Windows XP and it's really hard for them to migrate onto Windows XP. So do does Microsoft plan in the new future to provide support in IE8 itself? Don't worry, we will migrate them, don't worry. We have big teams to do that. No worry. All the corporates are managed by us, we will migrate them, don't worry about it. Why is it so long? Corporates are a little stubborn. Right? Exactly. If they are stubborn, they take a while. In the meantime, is it possible to give up? No, no, we will convince them. We will convince them. Don't worry. Thanks. Right? Any opinion I told is my own opinion. Please don't take it as Microsoft's opinion. <laughs> Right, but uh, that is the answer. Yeah, we also have the same problem. Right, people don't want to migrate. I've done one investment. I don't want to migrate there. For corporates, we have uh, we have migration strategy. We are doing it already. Many companies have already migrated to Windows 7. Forget Windows Vista. Windows 7 also people have done that there. And people who are still not in there, they'll be there soon. They'll see the benefits themselves. Okay. Hmm. We will give you a new version of ID. Don't worry. How does it look? Eclipse? I don't know man. Eclipse, uh, we'll try and see if what we can do about it. But I don't think anything that runs... Uh, but 
Okay, it doesn't work on Windows 7? Yeah. There is also, by the way, there is also an XP mode that you can choose if you want to run your application which you, you are die hard that you want it to only run on XP. You can use an XP mode also, but I don't want to go there because the conversation is going to Windows client now. But there is an XP mode that you can do. There is MDoc. There are a lot of things that are there option, available as an option for people who want to run legacy applications which will only work on XP. There are a lot of options available already. Okay. Virtualization is one more option. I don't know if you have heard about virtualization. Right. All right. So any other question? Right. I really like your spirit, man. I will take it as a personal thing. Right. I'll make sure that people migrate differently. <laughs> any other uh, question? Okay, three takeaways. IETestDrive.com is a site if you want to go and check out all these demos. IETestDrive.com, free demos, everything free downloaded. And you can showcase it as a part of your HTML presentations also. And you can also install IE9 beta available there. Um, the site for doing that is something I want to showcase quickly. Yes, and, uh, if you go to the site, it will give you the download link for downloading the beta version. HTML5. Doesn't have any plugin. <laughs> Right. Any other question? Yeah. Both of these are sponsored by Microsoft. Why don't you show everyone a test which uh, Microsoft has a browser to use? Beauty of the web is sponsored by Microsoft. IE Tester is sponsored by Microsoft. Why don't you show them a test? Like something like a finding IE Tester or any other test. Oh, you want to see other, bro other applications on this, is it? What side do you want to see? I, I just showed you Rediff, Rediff song thing, right? Which side it is? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you, yes, yes, please, please give that because it's still under beta. We can give the feedback currently. If you see any side which is working great in Chrome, doesn't work in unless. What are you looking for? You want to see the score, is it? Is that the answer? <laughs> It's tough. It's tough, man. It's tough on people's career also. <laughs> we are working with all the major web browser com web uh, based companies uh, to make sure that uh, their applications work well on new version. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Where is it? Right? Here, huh? Which one? I don't use this. I watch the TV there. Anyway, so. You can check it if you want. You can check it offline also. I'm just running out of time. Um, yeah. So, do you have a for acid test? Yes, we have it. We have uh, acid test result as well. It's coming as a part of the link also, or I can open the site if I don't remember the URL. Acid3.org, right? That's the URL. Uh, I'm doing platform terminal. But if somebody knows the URL, you can tell me right away till this loads. Asset3.org is what I think. Asset test org is it? Let's check it out. Sorry man, my English is like that only. Alright, so asset three test, right? Scripting must be enabled to use this test. Okay. Yeah, hold on. I, I think this comes as a part of platform preview itself. So, IE9 itself, right? Okay, I can see that. Hang on. It's a test for me. Eh? I have not felt so nervous like this. Huh? <laughs> a test for me standing here. Uh, it's there. As it test results, right? Right? Almost there. That's still in beta, so by the time it's there, it will be there. Okay. Thanks.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Harish. Uh, thank you, Sadeep. I think you passed the test of the crowd. Very <laughs> good. You are much resolute and perseverance here. I hope the same thing comes up in IE9 when it comes out in, out there. Uh, but then again, as developers, all of us know that IE has the largest market share, at least in the current sense for now. So we need to be able to develop things with that. So we need the help of Harish and Sandeep going along. They will be all around here. And if you guys want to touch with them, feel free to do so and then go from